Uh, and I'm a software engineer and I'm working on Samsung Internet Browser. Also, I'm uh, describing the talk of spec with my friends uh, Alex Russell, uh, Jerry Archibald, and recently joined uh, Marine Assembly in Google. Also, I'm uh, just contributing to Chrome uh, for some uh, software features. So, here's uh, Samsung Headquarter, uh, Swan City. Located in Swan City, and Seoul is just up here. So it's it's around like uh, 30 kilometers from uh, Seoul, and I'm living in uh, between Songnam City. So I'm commuting from Songnam uh, to Suwon, which takes about like 15 minutes by subway bus. So not bad. And I came uh, all the way from South Korea just yesterday. <laughs> So uh, nice to meet you all. Thanks. Okay, let me just uh, start talk, talk, uh, start my talk uh, with Samsung Internet. So here's some step counter from uh, uh, the research that Samsung Internet now uh, just came the uh, came the scene, and this is a step of uh, United people. And Samsung Internet is now shipped service server. Uh, we just rolled our, our browser uh, in March. So it's uh, been like two months. So I'm really, really excited about uh, introducing service worker and uh, well, we got one more browser. So thanks to uh, Bruce. <coughs> Good morning. So we in the room all share uh, what progress of web is, uh, at least. So I think uh, service worker just brings the reliability bits uh, about this progress of web apps. Also, uh, we just started with an offline first and background. The service worker is now doing its role in uh, just making this great uh, web applications. So let me uh, show you one quick demo, which I really like. Uh, then, uh, well. <coughs> this is an uh, offline wiki app uh, written by Jake. So uh, <coughs> I don't have really go from the installing uh, of the web uh, this time. I'm going to show you what uh, the actual uh, progress of web looks like. So this is a, a offline wiki web, web app. I just wanted to uh, well, check out if this is working fine in uh, offline. Like we have a, a audio clip for this. So as you just have seen, uh, I just uh, downloaded the content. So service worker, uh, with service worker, you can just make some of the uh, dynamic contents downloaded when user interacts. So let's uh, get that. And we have uh, this random style uh, in the list of cache content. And then I just uh, wanted to make it offline. So I uh, just made it airplane. <coughs> and yeah, uh, it just works offline. And let's see if uh, this thing works. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of working fine. So uh, it also just uh, comes in your uh, task manager uh, as one of your app uh, in AWS. Yeah, so this is uh, a progress of that. And pro a progress of that actually brings uh, these features, like these uh, capabilities. So reliability is like, uh, uh, well, when you are downloading a native app uh, from a web uh, store, 
then you are just paying all the uh, expensive bits in uh, the first place, I mean the first uh, load. So you are downloading all the contents uh, of them. But um, with the progress of that, perhaps, uh, your site is just getting a uh, web app. I mean, uh, finally, just uh, load it in your uh, browser. And uh, the reliability bit is like, uh, it should be loaded fast uh, whenever uh, you load the yeah. app. And it should work on flight networks. So, uh, and uh, also, it should be like a first class season uh, for your native OS. <coughs> also, uh, there was no uh, way we could do some background events and system to system events handling uh, with web context. But we are just delivering this. And also, <coughs> progress of the uh, is engaging the users. Like, uh, they can easily uh, well, uh, start from home screen. Also, uh, we can re-engage those users from uh, push notification, etc. Yes, so uh, back in 2010, uh, Wired uh, was saying like this, the web uh, is dead. And uh, finally, after five years, we <laughs> just uh, got our web back. And uh, thankfully, Jake uh, didn't forget to uh, share all the credits uh, with all the contributors. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, get into more details about uh, service workers. Uh, so uh, let's see uh, what kind of problems service worker tried to solve. Uh, so first of all, we really hate this, like uh, offline, and also this. So it happens in uh, some actual uh, offline uh, situation, but not only uh, this completely uh, offline scenario. Uh, actually, this is uh, more problem, like live buying. And uh, in Korea, we have uh, pretty uh, wide coverage of networks. Also, uh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is deployed. Uh, uh, I mean, Wi-Fi deployment is uh, prevailed. But whenever we are switching from Wi-Fi to uh, data network, because we uh, prefer data net, uh, prefer not using data network much. So uh, in that uh, moment that uh, the network is switching, the app is really uh, getting uh, flaky. So this prevails everywhere uh, from like uh, well Asia, Africa, Korea, and UK. So we really uh, wanted to just handle uh, this uh, problem. And the second problem we uh, focus uh, is background service. So uh, there was no way uh, we could handle some background service uh, in the web. So uh, let's see what uh, we had done uh, in the web context. So this is a snippet from uh, well, Push API spec, just back in like uh, 2012 or something. So we didn't have any uh, context that we can uh, well, get some push events. So what we had done uh, was like just uh, set message handler in Navigator. So the page will just get this push message and push reg register. Also, uh, another example is like uh, Alarm API, which, uh, which just, uh, well, has uh, been finished as a working group node of uh, CSM applications working group. But uh, we can see what uh, it just tried. It also tried uh, the event listener in a page context. So the navigator alarms uh, that, that one alarm uh, was just going to catch that alarm event. So the problem is that uh, when the page is entirely gone, then there was no way to just get uh, those events. So we have like all the game changer here. Okay. 
For too long, users have been left staring at a white screen. For too long, they've been let down by the cruel seas of network connectivity. And for too long, we've been powerless to help. We've been left waiting. But no longer, a new browser feature has arrived. A total game changer. A feature that lets you control the network, rather than letting the network control you. Who is this new feature? And what promises does it bring? The service worker. <laughs> uh, all the best to Jake and Yudef. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> yeah, so we now get uh, got the game changer. So uh, let's. Uh, just take a look at uh, the, the concepts and uh, what the service worker is and how it really works. So service worker is your uh, programmable proxy. So in your browser, like uh, a page is loading uh, some web contents, just uh, requesting to a uh, network layer, like network stack. Uh, the loader and also HTTP cache is working in that network layer. A service worker just sits uh, in between the network uh, stack and your page. So a service worker uh, technically just uh, intercepts all the requests, and then you can just uh, program and uh, just uh, fabricate whatever you uh, want as a response, and then you just return it to uh, the page. And service worker is just a script runs in the background. So it's a type of web worker. Uh, so like a uh, dedicated worker. So you are creating uh, the worker uh, with the constructor. And then uh, from uh, the moment that this constructor is called, a parallel thread is created in your browser, uh, from, I mean, different from your main thread. And then it's running. And also you have a shared worker. And service worker is just technically uh, a separate thread running in uh, background, uh, well, separate from your main thread. <coughs> and it actually uh, responds to events. So we, uh, in the spec, defined uh, events like lifecycle events for service worker <coughs> installation and uh, update, etc. And also some functional events. So primarily, uh, Fetch events are the uh, basic functional events that service worker is controlling. And also uh, there are uh, a few other functional events are, uh, Events uh, come to the network, uh, I mean, uh, web context like push API, push events, also uh, background sync event. So uh, this is how it works, like from the page, uh, navigation or some resource uh, fetch request uh, will just uh, create fetch events. Then uh, the, the service worker is just uh, spinning off, and then browser uh, fire fetch events to uh, service worker. And then uh, you can have a chance to just look at your uh, local cache, like uh, check cache if uh, the request and the response is already in the cache uh, ready. And if so, then uh, the cache returns the uh, matched response. And then uh, even not even just uh, going out to the network, you can uh, respond that uh, matched response to page direct directly. And then this is uh, what uh, you actually uh, handle from service worker thread uh, for this specific uh, fetch event. Then, because you already have done with this event, the uh, service worker will just be gone. So uh, it create created by the event, and then 
when the event is uh, handled, then browser terminates it uh, to the save the power. Uh, and service worker intentionally uh, just designed to be uh, short life. So comparing uh, dedicated worker and short, uh, service worker, uh, the dedicated worker is created when uh, the constructor is called, and then the worker thread is just bound to the lifetime of page. <coughs> Uh, so unless you are just calling uh, the terminate API from uh, the, the page, uh, the, the worker is just uh, maintained until the page is gone. Uh, in contrast, service worker uh, is, is just created by event, uh, as just explained. So a fetch event like, uh, for example, uh, loading an image, uh, will create service worker, spinning off service worker thread, and then this uh, on fetch hand uh, once this on fetch handler is just done, then uh, browser just terminates uh, this thread. Also, uh, some other functional events like push event can uh, create service worker. So uh, service worker just start by. Uh, being fired this uh, push event, and then uh, as soon as this push event is handled by developer, and then uh, browser terminates it. So browser actually do some uh, smart things like keeping the service worker running uh, for uh, some amount of time because uh, we'll start and terminate will just uh, pay cost. But uh, that optimization is just upon browser and. The basic idea of this of the lifetime of service worker is like this event driven. So I'm, uh, I'm a spec guy, so let's just look at uh, some of the concepts and terms from the spec. So here, uh, service worker spec defines uh, service worker registration and service worker. So service worker registration is uh, a artifact that uh, well, maintains the different versions of service workers because service workers uh, is kind of controlling uh, its client so it's active while uh, any of its client is just uh, main, uh, well, remain in the, in the tab so uh, if some different version of service worker is detected then it's installing in background and then when uh, all the clients controlled by the active service worker is just uh, unloaded, and at that moment, the installing work, installed worker will just uh, take that place. So uh, there, uh, there is registration concept. And uh, the uh, interception of URL space is uh, just defined by this URL scope. Uh, so uh, the URL scope that uh, the clients will be uh, controlled by will not be determined by uh, the location of your service worker script, but this uh, scope URL. So uh, just as just explained, uh, there is a installing uh, worker and waiting worker once installed uh, in background. And uh, there is an active worker already uh, controlling the clients. <laughs> and service worker is uh, running in the registering client's origin. So it's just a web uh, feature. So it uh, follows all the uh, well, fundamental uh, web concepts. So here's uh, a figure uh, that explains a little bit more. So, uh, so let's say this is a script. <laughs> So there's two pages now, and uh, well, you can get a service worker registration object by calling like uh, register API or get registrants API. So uh, you can just get uh, registration uh, out of it. And then if you uh, call some uh, attribute getter like registration active, then it will just uh, return the actual. Uh, so Active service worker uh, from the 
rather in tunnels. So uh, the, the second page, uh, well, let's imagine the second page uh, of this registration directive and the registration that installing. So uh, what actually uh, browser does behind is like it has all the persistent uh, registration objects <coughs> and service <coughs> objects. And then, uh, well, these internal states are just getting mapped to uh, the JavaScript objects in the script surface. So uh, this active worker is something that is controlling the clients already. So when some functional events like flash events uh, is fired, and service worker is running, also, uh, a new service worker version can be detected from the network and be uh, installed in background. So during that process, uh, new install event is getting fired, fired to service worker uh, in the background. So this is kind of like uh, how the actual service worker is spent and works. And another concept that service worker uh, requires is uh, that uh, HTTPS is uh, required. So to make it secure, uh, like service worker allows powerful, powerful stuff. So it's uh, basically uh, your program and proxy, so you can do everything uh, you want. So uh, just intercepting the request and uh, <coughs> retaining uh, the response is yours. So we don't really uh, want third party to uh, just do that, uh, uh, some malicious stuff. So um, HTTPS is just required to set up the, uh, set up the you know, HTTP setup is required to deploy the service, but you can still use uh, local host uh, for your development. Okay, so uh, in order to get the service worker ready, uh, Service worker should be registered uh, in order to control the clients. So let's uh, look at uh, what is required to install the service worker and uh, get it ready. So first of all, uh, the navigator that service worker that register API triggers uh, service, service worker installation. And here you see uh, the, the optional second parameter uh, scope. Uh, so this is the part that I just explained from the spec that the scope URL is the actual uh, URL space that uh, the service worker bound to this registration actually will serve. Uh, so by default, by default, this uh, URL scope will be uh, the location of the subject, <coughs> but uh, you can uh, give some more specific uh, path to the registration. And then uh, during the installation, browser uh, fires install event to service worker. So uh, this is a good moment to just uh, cache materials. So in order to uh, control clients, and then uh, if the client is requesting uh, a bunch of uh, resource fetches uh, while it's loading, then uh, the static resources uh, should be just ready and then the serve will be a good idea. So this is the moment that we can uh, do the pre-caching resources. <coughs> and uh, a service worker is, once service worker is registered and installed, then uh, the fetch events will get fired to the service worker. So uh, on fetch uh, event listener is the place where you just uh, handle this fetch event, and then uh, make your uh, response <coughs> object to respond to the uh, client document. Also, there is another uh, lifecycle event called activate. So uh, activate is just called when uh, an installed worker is getting an active worker because uh, the old active worker is just uh, uh, just gone because of uh, there's no client use it anymore then this activity event is fired, and then on activate, uh, then this one is some place you can uh, also manage your cache. So uh, service, for cache and service for cache is working uh, in a way that 
uh, there's no expiration of uh, entries. So uh, unless you are deleting uh, such records by yourself, then it just uh, persists. So uh, this only unactivate is uh, a place to manage your cache. Also, uh, service record can uh, get updated. So we uh, provide uh, a explicit API like registration that update. So uh, you can always check uh, a new service worker version uh, by calling this API. And also, uh, every na navigation browser uh, you know, automatically checks whether uh, there's a navigation or not, uh, there's a new service worker or not. But uh, it actually obeys all the, all the uh, HTTP network cache uh, mechanisms. So uh, if service worker is just cached in the network uh, stack, then it fetches the service worker from uh, the network stack. But uh, we have like 24 hours rule. So if uh, it has been uh, over 24 hours uh, well, since the last service worker update, then it just goes to network uh, without checking the network stack. Uh, and also we uh, well, by some uh, requests, we also put this uh, update check uh, role to uh, push event as well. <coughs> so here's uh, how a register works. So uh, calling a registration, uh, calling a register API, just make uh, the actual registration in your browser uh, internals like uh, this particular service worker will <coughs> control the assets uh, slash v1 scope. And uh, you can register multiple registrations. So for example, like uh, uh, number one, service worker register will register uh, service, service worker one.js covering uh, slash bar and then uh, the second register will uh, make another registration record that covers uh, slash foo because a scope uh, as a key and they're different and the third one uh, register API will cover the same scope as the first one so it just replaces the first one Yes, so this is uh, some other figure that uh, I would like to uh, show to explain uh, the whole process. So browser, uh, well, this just starts from the browser internals, but the register method actually uh, triggers this uh, update. And also the updates from the browser internals automatically happens, uh, starts from here. So uh, the first one is update. And then we just fetch the service worker script from the network. So this is the service worker script fetched from the network. Uh, so browser evaluates it. And then service worker is spinning off. And uh, it's in the <coughs> installing states. And it has uh, like uh, one install handler and activate and one fetch. So this is what developer uh, should write. And then uh, during the process, uh, the browser fires uh, install event. To, uh, and then it's only installed when the listener is invoked. So uh, well, this pre cache uh, code will be running. And then uh, if that is successfully done without any error, then uh, service worker will be in installed state. So, uh, everything's done uh, with service of installation now. But uh, this on fetch uh, is not really getting invoked uh, because uh, browser doesn't really fire uh, any uh, functional events until uh, until the, the service worker is getting activated. So as uh, previously explained, service worker is just getting uh, activated when Previous browser just intercepts all the fetch uh, requests outbound to the network. 
And there are two uh, different cases, like uh, client matching and sub-resource request. So those are very uh, important concepts. Like, uh, well, a client is just controlled by a service worker for its specific uh, scope URL. And this uh, scope URL uh, matching is just happening when uh, that client is uh, navigated. And uh, once uh, a client has just uh, got a controller, service worker, and it leaves uh, it, the, the service worker until its lifetime, it uh, does not uh, match with any other service worker uh, within its lifetime anymore. So uh, this is client matching scenario. Uh, so let's say, supposing a page is navigating uh, to this URL, like example.com, example index page. And there uh, are two service worker registrations uh, in browser. So, because the scope is uh, now uh, just at the root, service worker that sw.js is spinning off and then the browser fires fetch event and uh, we'll do uh, just sort of match and cache and then uh, get the response so this actually uh, match the response will be the resource that we just wanted to uh, make this client so uh, when we uh, respond this resource to the client, then uh, this